The Maillard Reaction. In 1912, Louise Maillard, a French chemist and physicist, noticed that there were reactions that occurred that were responsible for the texture and taste changes that happen when food is cooked. He figured the changes were important for medicinal purposes, though. Still, he hadn't quite figured out what exactly the mechanism was that caused this change. That's where this guy comes along. In 1953, John E. Hodge figured out the chemistry behind the food change. He attributed it to the reactions between amino acids and sugar molecules. So, what exactly is the Maillard reaction? The Maillard reaction is a series of chemical reactions between amino acids and carbohydrates that happen when food is cooked. It's essentially what gives us the browning color in food, and it makes things taste good. But the reaction happens fairly quickly, and there are ways we can speed it up even more. 1. We can apply more heat. The sweet spot for the reaction is between 350 and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. 2. We use drier foods, pat dry meats and vegetables before cooking them. 3. We create more alkaline environments, in other words, increase the pH. Rub baking soda on chicken wings for that extra crispy texture. 4. We use less water. This is basically number 2. Less water just means that there's less energy spent on evaporation so that more can be spent on the cooking. Now let's take a look at the chemistry behind the reaction. Remember this guy? Hodge was the one who discovered the mechanism behind the Mallard reaction. He proposed that there were three main steps. The first was the formation of the N-glycosylamine. Two, the amidori rearrangement, and three, product formation. This is arguably the most important step because it's what gives our food flavor and the browning color, courtesy of the melanoidins. Now different compounds arise as products, each with their own unique flavor palette, but two in particular lend to the flavor palette caused by caramelization. Caramelization and the Mallard reaction work simultaneously, despite being two separate processes. Nevertheless, the Mallard reaction is more complex. So let's review. The Mallard reaction changes the taste, color, and texture of cooked foods as a result of the proteins and sugar molecules. Let's take a look at some of the examples of the Mallard reaction. The first is steak. It happens as a result of the proteins denaturing in the muscle tissue. These include myosin and actin, which are important in muscle contraction, cell division, and other functions. To get the reaction, the surface temperature of the steak should be around 350 degrees. The second is in coffee. At temperatures between 150 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit, reactions occur for the development of roasted coffee in terms of taste and color. And third, cookies. The reaction creates the more savory flavors that accompany a good cookie and helps provide that rich brown color to the cookie. Just like with anything else, the Mallard reaction has good and bad properties. The good. It makes food delicious. It protects against DNA damage with its anti-mutagenic and antimicrobial properties and effects. The bad. Cooking can decrease the nutritional value of the foods, and some sources argue that the damage to DNA outweighs the good DNA conservation. The damage can lead to neurodegenerative diseases, and some of the products have been linked to cancer-causing substances. So the next time you have a beer, eat some french fries, enjoy some crispy turkey, or even saute some onions, remember that the Mallard reaction is at play. So bon appétit!